Hi everyone. So I've been trying to find this uh, issue 226 of Savage Dragon. It's the one that's become kind of infamous for having uh, not just a Trump on the cover, but some pre pretty crazy uh, inside pages that have been getting shared a lot on social media. So uh, I couldn't find this at a couple places. Quite frankly, Savage Dragon is not ordered at a lot of stores. It's uh, been around for 20 plus years. Same guy who wrote uh, or created it, does it, it's Eric Larson. Um, it's kind of a sad book. It's um, an example of uh, monomania. It's, it's a guy who was once like the young, hot, promising artist took over from Todd McFarlane, an amazing Spider-Man, uh, did a little bit of work on Incredible Hulk. And then uh, he kind of just fell down this rabbit hole of uh, when the image guys started, they had this thing where um, some of them, you know, Eric Larson said, I'm, I'm going to do this book for the rest of my life. And he got a lot of attention for that. But it was kind of like a who cares. And so he uh, just kind of threw, I mean, people like him for his older stuff. And, and he does really good in commissions. And he, I think he's like the chief operating officer at image so he seems like he's making real good uh living but i just feel like he uh took all of his like talent and potential and like put it in a suitcase and then put it in the closet in the top uh shelf but it's still there i mean um he he's really sticking to his 1992 promise to never stop producing savage dragon and to work on it all the time and i've peeked at it <laughs> i've gotten you know a couple the thing is that everyone says, like, they just remember the original Savage Dragon being a cop. Um, and then he's always like, well, that was only only for the first three years of the book. And he's been all these other things. And, and he hasn't been a cop since 1997. It's like people stopped caring in, like, 1994. I mean, it's, it's the Savage Dragon, the original one, was actually kind of a cool, fun, simple, silly character. He was, he was basically um, John McClane uh, from Die Hard. He was basically Bruce Willis painted green with a fin on his head. He got into some kind of fun adventures, but they always felt, um, I don't know, tongue-in-cheek, not real. Even though it was kind of a good book and that it was a, it was fun, it's kind of like, okay, we get it. Now can you please go you know, back to work? Oh, I forgot Eric Larson had a great run on The Punisher. Yeah, he was a big deal at Marvel. Um, he was the real up-and-comer, and, -comer and he, had, he had great runs on everything. Um, I think he actually did go back to Marvel for like a an abortive run on uh, Nova, the Human Rocket, in like mid '90s, and um, I think he just did covers and then ended up getting an argument or something like that. But anyway, this uh, Trump cover and especially the two pages I saw uh, seemed like really red wheat, uh, red meat. I was like, oh, this is going to be a great roast. It's going to be so obnoxious. Um, me and uh, Eric Larson used to. Uh, I don't know, just chat on Facebook and, um, you know, getting little political debates back when that was cool to do like three years ago. And then, um, I don't know if I got blocked or something. Anyway, just kind of stopped talking. I'd peek in with him. He's actually, I don't know if I'd call him an SJW. I'd just say he's a very far left liberal, but kind of like the old school. Like he's not going to block you the first or 20th time you offend or annoy him. Um, so, uh, but he's always seemed to me to be a, a basically good guy who's just a little off. Like, like I said, basing your whole career on keeping a promise you made in 1992 that nobody really cares if you keep it or not. It's weird. And the book is, um, I respect the book for just being crazy. I've actually wanted to review a couple of the issues, but they're so gra <coughs> graphic. Um, honestly, it's borderline a porn comic. I mean, there was a whole, I, can't, I can't even describe it. Like I said, I've, I've, uh, I'm trying to keep this fairly uh, family friendly, but you just go and, and I do kind of laugh good naturedly when I read it because like, oh boy, he's just doing whatever he wants. But he, um, when I was talking about his heyday at Marvel, he used to be a kind of a classic um, penciler who uh, uh, penciled things very tightly. You know, that means things are very solid structure and all the detail and everything the inker would need and then the inker comes over or the you know and then you kind of uh go over the lines and improve them and, and do the line weights 
he started doing a thing that kind of destroyed John Byrne's reputation in, in the 90s. He started uh, drawing in ink. So his stuff became very, very rough, very sketchy, very... Uh, he's a strong enough artist <laughs> that it never got, like, just straight up blobby. But if you go back and you look at his Punisher or his Amazing Spider-Man, he had a great run on that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I forgot. Then he did Spider-Man. And he did this uh, really great Sinister Six story that was crazy good. I've read all those mi issues a million times. Put it this way. He actually had a fire in his house, and his house burned down and while he was doing Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> so he, um, I think he, you know, operating from a hotel or a friend's house or whatever, he started, um, you know, his stuff got a little looser. And everyone it was like, oh, you know, his house burned down. But then when he got another house, his stuff got even looser. His stuff was better when he was recovering from a house fire than it is when he decided to do this quick style. Because I think at some point he knows that this is just a weird personal obsession of his. I think he makes a ton of money from commissions of just, you know, hey, can you draw me Spider-Man? And um, but So anyway, getting back to the book, I was very disappointed in that the Trump stuff, he draws Trump like this giant monster, and I thought he was going to do something fun with it, but... Um, it's not really about Trump. It's about Trump followers and not really Trump followers, but like the, uh, diseased ravings of someone who only watches Rachel Maddow, only hangs out with people who vote straight ticket, uh, ticket Democrat, um, literally thinks there's 62 million, oh my God, Nazis who voted for the guy that he doesn't like. Basically the people who still have an emotionally dealt with it like I like the, uh, the the guy on the other video said it's not about a thing between left and right it's a it's between extremists and moderates I would say extremists and normal people um, the funny thing is that the rest of the book is basically wrapping a bunch of subplots I guess the real savage dragon died in the last issue he hasn't been in it for like f I don't know five or more years he's got his son Malcolm who is basically Miles Morales who gets laid. <laughs> That's how I would describe him. He's, I wouldn't really call, um, like I said, I wouldn't call Eric Larson SJW. He does a lot of things that SJWs detest. Like all the women are really busty, tiny waist. They're always like super like down for the get down all the time. And um, so, uh, and he, there's been several times when SJWs have just flipped out him. He doesn't care. He's got a ton of money, so. He's fine with that. But Malcolm is kind of that SJW thing where when you get to like the the white far left people writing a black person and they just can't give them any personality because they're afraid anything, you know, applies to the whole race. So don't make them have a temper. Don't make them, you know, you know, have a, you know, a jokey sense of humor. Just have them blandly competent and everything. And that's what it is. The weird thing is, like, like I said, there's a lot of like um, kind of creepy stuff. Like, uh, Malcolm has a girlfriend who's gotten pregnant, and they got, like, three kids, but his girlfriend looks like she's 12, and she's, like, an Asian girl who wears, like, a Catholic school girl outfit all the time. I was like, this is, it's just a little... It's like when people recommend me to read Sky Doll, and I flip through it, and it's like, this does, I don't, This is a creepy book. It's creeping me out. Um, so the book was not the cringe fest I expected it to, expected it to be, and wanted it to be, it was mainly just wrapping up a ton of subplots about these very, the funny thing is, it's a very detailed story about very sketchily drawn characters. It feels like more time is spent lettering this book uh, than writing it. Um, so uh, basically there was an alien invasion, and now a bunch of people don't like aliens. So um, Trump uh, writes a bill that says all uh, aliens out of America specifically extraterrestrials. Now, the big problem is that, and actually it's not really a problem, it's just something I didn't like. Uh, I respect uh, that Eric Larson is using his own character to spew his insane drivel and not, you know, uh, getting a work at Marvel or DC and using some character he didn't create to do it. But the stuff is just sick. Like, it's like, um, oh, so I forgot to mention that I bought this at Midtown Comics in Times Square. And I had this gimmick idea to... Um, review it in Times Square, read it, and, you know, record the video and audio. And then <laughs> I had it in my back pocket, 
And then like I'm Dennis the Menace or something. And then someone either pulled it out of my back pocket or it fell out. And um, I'd only gone like 60 feet since the last time I was reading it. So I went back, I retraced my step, and it was just gone. Um, so I think someone just pulled it out of my pocket as a goof. Um, or it fell and it got instantly got swept up because they have like a ton of guys just sitting there to sweep up everything. It's trying to keep it really nice. Um, but anyway, the, the stuff about um, Trump himself, it was just a basic order. But then it became this really weird thing where he brought out these like cartoonish, put it this way. Eric Larson seems to think that like the worst people at like Charlottesville are not just the average Trump supporter or or Republican, but indicative of all of them. So it's kind of good that the, the book came out, fell out of my pocket because honestly, I wouldn't have been able to show anything. It had like really vile racial epithets and, um, just really graphic, weird nudity, weird nudity, like flip through it at the comic store. If they have it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway. Um, so it was just, you know, uh, the most over, th- and the thing is, it's fine if you want to make it over the top. I love Dark Knight Returns, the original from the 80s from Frank Miller, but he would show like both sides. He would show, you know, like an extreme right person, extreme left person, kind of like make fun of him. I don't get the feel that he was, that Eric Larson, especially since I've discussed politics with him a lot. So yeah, the stuff with the Trump uh, supporters, it was not... It was really over the top, but I just having spoken to uh, Eric about um, politics, I know this is not him doing a Frank Miller, you know, fun take on it, but he literally thinks they're like this. Like I was saying, one of his big bugbears, as they say, was uh, voter ID. He was very insistent that voter ID specifically disenfranchises disenfranchises black people. Um, And it seemed... Like I said, a lot of these uh, SJW things end up being like a purse puppy type of thing. It's like, why do you think black people are less able to follow simple rules than everyone else? You know, it's, it's constantly brought up how many Republicans are like broken, living in shacks in the deep south, and nobody's worried that they're going to have the wherewithal to produce a birth certificate or a driver's license or a freaking. Some of these states, you can your fishing license will literally qualify as identification, like a freaking fishing license, seriously, or ID to any school. So um, that was just like a weird one. It's like, you really need to get out. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, there were people had voter ID cards in friggin' Afghanistan, like way out in the hinterlands, freaking Maywan district. If you're living in freaking America, you can figure out how to get a freaking ID to vote once every four years for president. But um, anyway, so yeah, so it became this disappointing thing of like uh, the actual uh, Trump stuff was not even half of it. It was just a lot of subplots. Um, The political allegory was, it was really stepped on too because he only showed people overreacting. But then a lot of the stuff they were overreacting to were legitimate things. So it's like if you overreact to something that's a legitimate thing to over... Like, basically, they're like, we don't like aliens. It's like... And they show aliens invaded and took over, like, the entire... Like, destroyed the whole city. It's just a bunch of rubble. So it's like, does that really make you a bigot for hating aliens after they just blew up your whole city and tried to blow up the whole world? Um, And then... uh, And then the dragon... So it took, like, 20 years to reveal this, but the savage dragon and his son are aliens. Um, So... uh, it became this thing. Oh, and then like the FBI showed up, but they were like ridiculous. Like these, just like these like ugly goons who just attacked him and were just basically like trying to kill him. It was really, it was very car- cartoonish, but not in a fun way. It just felt like a guy who doesn't interact with normal people a lot, or he only act interacts with, you know, uh, people that think exactly the same as he does in real life. And then, um, he gets like these weird, cartoonish beliefs but um anyway that's it (laughs) i think me it wasn't a big deal to get excited or like triggered by literally the question of where the book went to um was more interesting than the book i wouldn't pick up a future issue um 
I don't know. Maybe if this was like at the library, I check like I check out a trade paperback. I don't, honestly, except for like the first like the first four issue miniseries and and about like the first ten issues of the regular series, like way back in like nineteen ninety two or ninety three. I don't really care. It's not that deep of a of a mythos or a mythology to really plumb that well for like freaking twenty five years. It's like uh, Eric Larson's. I think he's about fifty four. He needs to stop. You know, <laughs> he's at two twenty six. I, I, like I said, this is some kind of like a obsessive compulsive monomania thing. Get it to two fifty. I'm sure he set some kind of record, and then just retire it, and then. Just, Try to get on a, like a six issue arc of action comics at DC or something. Jeez, just get off of this thing. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, so, uh, tell me if you've actually flipped th- through this or read it, what you thought about it. I, I didn't. I didn't even really think that anyone that's like left or far left would really like it. It was just kind of dumb. Like it was embarrassing. Like if I would have read some comic and. It would have had Hillary saying, like, I hate American and throw all white people in ovens. I wouldn't be like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's how she is. I was just like, oh, this is childish. I'm, like, embarrassed, like, being connected with this. Um, So tell me what you think about this video and the book. Tell me what you think about Savage Dragon. Have you even read it in the last 20 years or so? Tell me what you think. Tell me what book you would like to see Eric Larson on when he he's never going to come to his senses he's going to ride this thing to when it's making like 1000 copies sold and he's doing fine on money he doesn't care anyway thanks for watching i'll have more videos up tomorrow